Hi there, uh, this is Mr. Sand, and I want to tell you about um, a common confusion related to thrust and forces. So first of all, whenever you have a force diagram, or a free body diagram, as they sometimes are called, um, it, uh, it might look like a box. I, I mean, the easiest way to kind of describe this is through a box, I guess. So let's say you have a box, and it's on some sort of surface. Okay, now just right here we have a box and in the center of the mass, let's say it's right there. Um, all the time, no matter what, you're gonna have you're gonna have gravity acting on this. Okay, gravity's always acting on this. So you always, 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 always have the force due to gravity pulling down on the object. Now you also always have the normal force, and I'll draw it with a red here, the normal force opposing uh, any force that is uh, pulling down on a surface here. So this object is pulling down, is being pulled down by gravity, and it's in contact with this surface right here. So the force acting, resisting gravity, should be equal and opposite, is the normal force right there. Okay, and it's always perpendicular to the surface that the object's on. So on this case, the surface is like this, so perpendicular to that. Oh, there it is. Uh, that's a normal force. If this were slanted, okay, if this situation were slanted, let's say that you have a box going kind of sideways, if the situation were slanted um, or going down at an angle like this, um, you would have the force due to gravity coming straight down towards the center of the Earth, okay, just like this. And you would have the normal force acting perpendicular to the surface. So perpendicular to the surface here would be, let's see, there's a surface, and perpendicular to that would be right here. That would be a straight line, though. Straight line up. And that would be the normal force, because it's perpendicular to the surface that this box is resting on. Okay? So those two forces, you can almost always guarantee that those forces are going to be acting on objects that are, that are somehow in, in contact with the ground. Okay? Especially gravity, is if it's on Earth, gravity's working. Okay. So, with those two forces out of the way, I want to now talk about thrust. Um, thrust is only, only seen when you have an object that is spewing something out of its backside. And it's the backs. I say backside because uh, it's going, it's pushing something, and then it's going in the opposite direction. It's like if you. I don't know, if you sit, you can see this, um, if people do this all the time, this little experiment where they kind of like, they sit on like a, you know, on a, uh, let's say you have like a bike. Oh, this is going to be a bad drawing of a bike. Uh-oh, it's already in trouble. Um, let's say you have a bike right, right here. <laughs> okay, this is a really bad drawing of a bike. All righty, right there. And let's say that you have like, um, I don't know, a fire extinguisher that you're pushing and that you're pointing in uh, the backwards direction here. So if you if you have a fire extinguisher and there's a nozzle and there's a fire extinguisher right here and you're sitting on this bike and you're kind of like, yeah, I've got a fire extinguisher and I'm pushing it back, I'm pointing it backwards. Um, there, if you fire the fire extinguisher, it's going to expel gas out of the back, right? And what's it going to do? So I'm just pointing right that the arrow has is not a force. That arrow is just gas shooting out of the back, so that's gas right there. This is not a vec. This is not, not force. But what it's doing is by pu by pushing that gas out, it's propelling this person forward. And the person's on a bike. But there's low friction, so boom, this this guy gets to go forward, and that's a force, which is a thrust. Okay, that is, and it's it's got to be a push right there. It's got to be a push. Thrust is always a push. Right? Right. So that's what happens when you have a thrust. Most of, case, most of the cases where you've got an object that's moving in a direction, that's not thrust. That is just an object moving in a straight line, according to Newton's first law, without any uh, other forces acting on it. Okay? So if a box right here, let's just say right up on top here, this situation up here, if this box is moving, let's say it's moving, Moving to the right. Great, it's moving to the right. Well, I can draw an arrow that says it's moving to the right. 
okay, fine, I can draw arrows, but that arrow really just shows you the movement of the object. It doesn't say the forces, and that's what's important here. The forces, not the movement. We're not talking about acceleration here. We're not talking about velocity here. We're talking about forces. So if this object right here is moving to the right, and let's say, let's just say it's moving to the right, and it's, there's, it's moving at a constant velocity. At a constant velocity. Okay, so it's moving at a constant velocity. Um, that must mean that there is no net forces acting on it. At a constant velocity, you should know this, there is no net forces acting on it. That means all the forces, the sum of all the forces, that's what this little Riemann sum, the sum of all the forces acting on this object equals zero. So that means the G, the, the force due to gravity, and the normal force, they cancel each other out, and there is no net force. Okay? So if this is moving at a, at a constant velocity, there's no net force, then this object right here, that's a perfect description of this object in, in terms of a force diagram or a free body diagram, which is what we're discuss, discussing now. This is not related to um, uh, acceleration vectors or velocity vectors. It is just a f is talking about the forces acting on the object. Okay? Okay. Now, let's ignore this. Let's say ah, it's not moving with a constant velocity. Let's just say it's moving to the right. Okay, let's say it's just moving to the right, and it's slowing down, and slowing down, slowing. Okay, so it's slowing. It's moving to the right, and it's slowing. Now, it would normally, if it had uh, no net forces acting on it, it would normally just go at a constant velocity in a straight line forever. But there is a f the reason it's not doing that the reason it's changing its velocity is because of a force acting on it. Um, and we can call this, and we can say due to friction, sure, due to friction. Due to friction. Um, and normally I use orange for friction. Okay, so it's going to the right and it's slowing due to friction. So there's a force due to friction that is acting on this box. So I have to write that force in this direction. So I'll say just FF, force due to friction. So that means that there is a force acting on the box, slowing it down. There's a force pushing it, or in this case, whatever you want to describe, however you want to describe friction, pushing, pulling, whatever. It's stopping this box from moving to the right. Um, it's slowing it down, and eventually it's going to stop. When it stops, that force due to friction that no longer acts on this box, and it just stays put. The net forces are zero. It's at a constant velocity, which is zero in that case, so all the forces equal each other. Okay, there's no thrust in this situation. All right, now let's focus on this this little scenario over here, this guy over here. Okay, now um, let's say that this is a, is a box, and it's, um, let's say um, that... When you add these forces together, so this vector plus that vector, let's say that the resulting vector, let's just say the resulting vector is, is, uh, let's use purple. The resulting vector, this is the result. So when this red is added to the, the end of this, it'll be something like that. The overall force, this is the net force, I'll just say force net, is in this direction. Okay? Now this is not thrust, this is just what happens when you add this vector plus this vector. Now this, what I've just drawn right here, this is not what you draw on any free body diagram. I'm just showing you what happens when these forces are added together. This is not drawn. Not ever drawn. I'm just showing you this because I want you to see that when you add this vector plus this vector, your overall force is going to be in this direction. So. If this is not ever drawn, so what, I'll take this off now, since this is not ever drawn in a force diagram, because those forces, that force is already there. We don't want to add extra force to this. When they're added together, the overall force is going to be down this slope. So we can say that this thing is moving. It's moving. It's moving down the slope. Moving down. Moving down slope. Down slope. And its movement is going to be in that direction, right? But that's the movement. It's not the force vector. It's not uh, a part of the force 
diagram, not, not a part of the, the any forces that are acting on this. It's not that. It's just the overall movement is going in this direction. Okay? We can say that. That's fine. It's, it's moving in that direction. Okay? You, it would be an acceleration vector. But we're not writing the acceleration vectors. All we're writing are the force vectors. So, this thing is moving down slope. Great. We don't need to draw a thrust. It's not, there's no extra force that's acting on it. It's just these two forces right here. Okay? All right. And then finally, let's say that this object is not moving at all. And it's not moving. It's not moving. It's not moving because not moving. Let's say it's not moving because friction stops it. Okay? Because friction. Um, so that must mean that there is another vector, a force vector in this direction, which is due to friction that is stopping this thing. So it's a push up this hill or a pull, whatever you want to call it. It's resisting that uh, that over these forces that are added together. So all together, if these are all added up, they're all the sum of all the forces will equal zero. Okay, it's not moving. Now it, we could say that right, it's not moving. That's one situation where all the forces are added together and it's equal zero. Um, we could also say that it is moving, this is confusing, it is moving at a constant velocity. So we could just choose, we don't know just based on this force diagram if it's moving at a constant velocity or if it's just staying put. Well, I can also stipulate that zero meters per second is a constant velocity as well. So it, it doesn't really hurt us here. But I'm just saying from the force diagram alone, we can't tell if the object's moving or not. We can just say that all the forces are equal to zero, so it must have a constant velocity. In this case, we'll just say it's at rest. We'll say that it's zero meters per second. There's nothing from this diagram that can tell you that it's at zero meters per second. Um, you just know that it's a constant velocity, so it, uh, all these are added together, that must equal zero. Okay, so that was quick. I hope it kind of clarifies what thrust is. Thrust is a very special situation where things are thrown out the back of something else, propelling it forward. It's a, it's a force, so it changes the acceleration. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, it changes the velocity of, of an object, so it gives you acceleration. Okay, so let me know if that works. Uh, if not, I can clarify some more.